What's up? It's me, Kevin. Just here to do my Jurassic World movie review. We'll be talking about my first impressions about the film, my positives, my negatives. Um, I just saw the film. Um, by the time you probably see this, it's gonna be morning. But I'm uploading this at like one o'clock, one o'clock in the morning. I just saw one of the first screenings of it, and I really wanted to make my video and give my reviews and my thoughts about it. Um. My first impressions of this film, I will say, is a good film. There were lots of redeeming qualities in this film. I was really happy about this film. Um, it does have its negatives, but I don't think they're giant. Um, I, and the film, you know, I, a lot of critics I know right off the bat was around 74, 74% on Rotten Tomatoes. I believe by now it's dropped to 69, but I still very much stamp this film as being a good film, a Jurassic Park, Jurassic World film, just because it has... It's, it's like a hybrid film, literally. It, it's like a hybrid where there are a lot of references and timbits and locations that we do see that were in the original Jurassic Park. Um, it just, it's kind of funny I, that we end up seeing in this film. Um, we see the resort that has made Jurassic World, the giant resort that was made on top of what used to be Jurassic Park um, f way back 30 years from the time that this was made. I believe it's a 30 year gap between the original Jurassic Park and this one, something like that. Um, but not to give away too much, but there was a scene which I have to mention because there was a scene that really touched me. Because being I, I, Jurassic Park was one of the first films I actually ever saw when I was young on VHS <laughs> until my sister destroyed it, unfortunately. And then I had to get, I think it was another one at some point. But it was a scene where uh, the young boys, the sons, I think it's Ty Simpson and his brother or something like that, um, they're basically have gone off-road and off-roaded uh, into an area that is restricted. They end up meeting the Indominus Rex. They're running, they're running, they get away, that kind of thing. And by the time they get away, they do get away. Um, they walk through, they walk through the the woods or you know the jungle and they end up saying like i believe it's you walk up to a log and it, it the camera kind of pans up and you end up seeing whoa isn't that two doors that looks like two doors and they walk up to it oh my god it's the original jurassic park center and it really was something that i, I that panning up to the door was just tingling i was just, i was so happy because I, I, I was wondering when, if how much that we would see from the original Jurassic Park that would reference, you know, referencing, or would, would we actually see locations. But they end up walking in there, and, you know, it has the original look of the Jurassic Park. There was even that flag that was held held up across on top of the balconies uh, when we last saw the T-Rex. Uh, the T-Rex takes it down after, but it, they, they show us the flag. They show us... The original Jeeps um, that we saw from Jurassic Park. The best thing about this, I have to say, if you're a really big fan, then you'll know what I'm talking about. But in the very first scene in Jurassic Park, where John Hammond takes Dr. Grant and the group up on the hill to see the Brachiosaurus, on the Jeep, um, they each had a lanyard numbered. And this lanyard was a 029 on it, which was the original number that Dr. Grant's uh, Jeep was. And two of them were parked, but that one had a lanyard 029, which is another reference back to, um, you know, Jurassic Park. And it had, had the original logo going on it. Oh, my God. It was just blowing my mind. That, and then also, Timbit, kind of spoiler. Um, if you do, I'll, I'll, this is another Timbit that a lot of Jurassic Park fans must, probably will know. Um, I'll, I'll kind of reference this, that scene in Jurassic Park. It comes up to it, um, what I'm, what I'm going to kind of... Uh, divulge to uh, if you all remember in Jurassic Park uh, the scene before right before the T-Rex goes goes through the fence uh, that young boy has those kind of binoculars like and he's checking out the goat that was left out for the T-Rex and those binoculars are kind of you know they're like a camo you know binoculars or whatever I, re I remember them personally and but when the young when uh, Ty Simpson and, and them walk through the center and they walk back where the jeeps are Ty Simpson walks up to a desk and he picks up these binoculars and he even turns them and they pop out and it was like oh my god they actually you know still work it was so awesome like I, I loved how many references that they were and they were all genuinely great references to the original Jurassic Park um yeah like the only, the only thing I'll kind of say um it was like a love hate which we didn't actually see a lot of um how, how do you put it like we we didn't see a lot of the T-Rex in this film. 
Um, like spoiler alert, you will see a, a large part of him. Probably you'll you'll see a good minute, two three minutes of him uh, at the very end. Spoiler, but you do not see him right off the bat. You can you don't even see him eating when that scene in the trailers where you see him uh, hop down and eat the goat. You only see his eye and eyes and maybe part of his head. But that's all you end up seeing. But yeah, I wish that we could see more. I've seen more of the T Rex because it was such a defining, you know, creature. You know, dinosaur from the original Jurassic Park. But there's still uh, so many references to him, um, uh, the T Rex, and then to the center. And the only thing I thought we would actually see, weirdly enough, because um, there was that one poster that came out with, which had that raptor sitting on the original Jeep that Dr. Grant fell through the, I believe he fell through the, the trees from when the T-Rex put, put the, that Jeep over the side um, in the original Jurassic Park. I actually thought we would get a reference or, no, not, not even a reference, a location. We pan around and we actually see the Jeeps there. Because in that poster, you see the Jeep and then you see the resort way farther down on the, on the near the beaches. So I really thought we would actually see that, um, you know, the Jeep. So yeah, I really thought we would see that, um, but we didn't. Uh, whatever, I'm happy uh, with, with what the movie was. Um, the positive, like I'll keep going with the positive positives. Sorry, um, you know this film had a lot of new stuff to it, but like I said, it, had, it was it was a lot like a hybrid hybrid film where it had a lot of references to the the, the original Jurassic Park. Um, and, you know, and we also we had we had some uh, reoccurring characters, which I think it was only one, unfortunately, which was Doctor Wu, who created a lot of the dinosaurs back then. He comes back, he creates the Indominus Rex and stuff like that. And uh, I don't, I'm just not trying to give away too much to this film. It is a good film. Um, I loved how you know Chris Pratt worked with the Raptors in this film. Um, he's able to go actually be the Alpha. Like weirdly enough, yeah, he's able to become the become the Alpha. Um, yeah, it, w it was pretty good to see him and this character. I, I didn't overly divulge, think, you know, lo I got, how do you put this? Like, they weren't highly in-depth characters. You just followed them, and they kind of took you on this ride, which I really enjoyed. It was all over the park. I actually didn't think it was going to be so in-depth as this movie w would be as in-depth and all over the place as it was. But like, I think from the moment that we went into the, the original Jurassic Park, center I said oh my god this might actually be a good film because we're going into an area where, 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 where we are being taken back to that original Jurassic Park which this movie did gave me that feeling of probably at least 60% of that feeling so I was really overjoyed to see and feel that feeling because it's been a long time it's been a very very long time it's probably been since Lost World because I still love Lost World and it gave me that feeling so yeah is it what other positives can I think of? There, there are a lot. There are a few. I'm trying to reference them and talk to them as much as I can. But, you know, I loved how Brian, Brian Dallas uh, Howard's uh, character was in this. I thought she would actually have... She'd be related in somehow to Hammond. Because she always wore... She wore all white and he wore all white. Um, yeah, You know, obviously, uh, John Hammond wore all white uh, uh, suit thing or whatever back in Jurassic Park. So I actually thought there would be... A she would have some kind of relation but she never did um yeah that this and seeing the resort itself actually you know come true which was something that steven spielberg even said in previous tra uh night trailers but interviews saying you know this is a somewhere where we actually never thought we could go we could go somewhere that you know people are on island running across and blah 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 but we never actually create a park which they did and we saw you know a lot of new creatures we saw a lot of new um how do you put this like, sequences that you wouldn't think would be possible like i admit this this film a good chunk of this film is cgi but it's good cgi i was actually impressed with how, how much cgi was in this film um how, how it was utilized but so i do approve of this film i i did very much like how they utilized um the cgi they did have a little bit of animatronics yeah like i said it's probably for me it's like a 90 10 percent so 90 percent is the cgi it's a small scene where you see the Brachiosaurus that had been taken down by the Indominus Rex, and they probably used that as the animatronics. Because, spoiler alert, Chris Pratt's character goes up to this uh, wounded uh, Brachiosaurus, and his head moves, and it looks like, you know, it looks like a real one. Like, I actually like how um, they used uh, uh, 
party of animatronics for that scene, which they might, must have because they're obviously touching it in this scene, touching the Brachiosaurus and saying, oh my god, you know. But it was really cool to see that. You see a lot of Stegosauruses. You see the Triceratops. And the Triceratops looked really cool. You see the Pterodactyls in the scene. You actually see something closer to, um, with the Pterodactyls, I'll say this. Um, if you remember from Jurassic Park 3, you see that kind of dome that the, 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 the Pterodactyls were left in. Um, after the humans, humans had left and cleared out, um, this dome, there was, yeah, they actually used a dome in this film, um, we see it, it is similar to the one that was used, um, in, uh, Jurassic Park 3, like, it's obviously not off a cliff, it's just a giant dome, uh, holding, uh, all these pterodactyls in, and even the pterodactyls, there were new colors, they were, they were really creatively made, like, it looked really real, it looked what, what they would look like in, uh, in real life, so I was really happy to see that, um, yeah, I just, I really stand out this film as being a good film, genuinely good film, um, yeah, like, I, by the end of this film, I'll put it this way, spoiler alert, whatever, I'm gonna say it anyways, fuck it, um, the T-Rex and the Indominus Rex end up fighting at the very end, but the scene from which T-Rex comes from is so awesome, like, you never, you will, you will not see much of him at all during this film, but that by, but by the end of this film, you're gonna see a certain character open up a cage, bring the T-Rex out, and it's it's all glory, and it's like, oh my god. Like, it was that awesome. So, yeah, the T-Rex and the Indominus end up fighting. Um, you end up seeing some sea creatures of sorts. I don't want to give too much away, but it, it's, it's a really good scene. Um, scenes and, and very powerful scenes. Um, there are a few that were kind of lightheaded. They didn't, it kind of fell off, but they were... A lot of this film made you feel heavy. You say, you know, if we don't deal with this, we're all going to die. So, um, note, to, note to you to let you know this. Um, I, another scene um, from which I don't know this creature, unfortunately. The, the water creature, you know, dinosaur. The scene where, obviously, you know, from the, from the trailer, the, 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 the great white shark is kind of reeled out, reeled out to the middle of uh, that kind of large um, aquarium for the sea creature, uh, the dinosaur. And the dinosaur comes up, eats it, but it, the funniest thing is, when he comes up to eat this, eat the great white shark, when he takes it away, pshing, and the wire kind of gives that springing sound that we originally would have heard from, from the same wires that broke when T-Rex broke through the fence in the original Jurassic Park. Like, if you're a true fan, you know what I'm talking about. So it gave that same sound. So it was really cool how many references were in this film. I might go see it again, um, but... This film was really everything that I, I was very happy with. Like I still thought like there were some things that could have been better done, but I was still happy. So yeah, I think that's all my positives, guys. Um, I will note. I hope God they do make it make make a Jurassic World two or something like that. And yeah, just because I do like how Colin Tavares made this film. He directed it like. I know Steven Spielberg's name has been plastered all over this film just to get people in the theaters to watch it, but I still like him as a director because he did do a good job with this film. Um, yeah, I think that's, you know, I'll, t I'll touch on it again a little bit on the rafters. The rafters do not look like the rafters that we saw in Jurassic Park 3. I actually do wish they looked like the ones in Jurassic Park 3 because they look much more abundantly colorized. Um, maybe of what they would have looked like back in 65 million years ago, but in this film... They come back. There, there are there's some coloration differences, but they look much um, more like what they look like in the original Jurassic Park. So, yeah, I think that's it. Um, I'm gonna run into some of my negatives, unfortunately. Um, the only negatives about this film I have to say is that by the end of this film, for some reason, this some this huge resort um, that is left for the dinosaurs. Why would they leave it by the end of this film? The only thing, spoiler alert, the only thing that's left alive. Is really one raptor, one T Rex, and that's it. All most of the pterodactyls were killed or put down by the end of this film. Everybody just left, and they said, "Okay, we just left a huge resort to a T Rex, and then everything else was fenced up." So it really didn't make sense at the end of this film, personally for me, because they just left a T Rex and a raptor. Are you serious? You could just why couldn't you just put them down and put them back in their cages and then restart the park? Like it just the ending wasn't, like, I think they, they wanted to leave a cliffhanger. Maybe this isn't in the end. They end up going back at some point and reestablishing the park. But it's just because they left, in in the way that they left, like, 
I don't know. I just I, I didn't like that they just left the park there. Maybe the, maybe that's the reason with cliffhanger. Then I'll then I'll I'll give it to that. It's a cliffhanger. But if this was an ending ending, um, then it's a very poor ending. Like I didn't like that they just left the whole resort. This resort in the movie is huge, so why would they just leave it? Like it was by the end of this film, everybody's gone. The only people left there is Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, and then and her nephews. And they end up leaving the leaving on a boat, obviously a little bit later on after the Indominus and T Rex fight. But why would they just? Why would they come back and say, okay, we can take we take control, and then you know in the the one character I, I unfortunately don't know his name, um, who is left behind. He takes command of a control room and then control room, and by the time you know certain dinosaurs are killed, he just shuts everything down, and leaves with them. It's like, what the fuck you doing? You only have two dinosaurs out of their paddock. Can you not just shoot them with a taser or something? Like I understand some people got hurt and a lot of people died. But the park is still pretty much intact, with all the most of the fences up, and most of the animals still in their paddock or dead. So, personally, for me, it is stupid to leave, leave the park. Maybe it's a cliffhanger, like I said, but that's one of my negatives. I didn't like how they just left the park there. It just didn't make sense for me personally. Um, I no, this is kind of a positive negative. Um, I did. In this film, Injen still takes quite a bit, a, quite a bit of a control. Um, in this film, I'll say that because obviously in the previous film, Injen's always been trying to you know take uh, take the dinosaurs off, or trying to do something to make money with the dinosaurs, which obviously would be dangerous. Like take them off the island, like they tried in Lost World, or you know in in the original. I don't know how. I think I don't think there was a huge Injen issue in the original Jurassic Park. There wasn't, but. After Lost World, Ingen is plastered as being a company that is just willing to do anything, and it pretty much did, did everything and it got everybody killed that went to go get those dinosaurs, dinosaurs, and bring them back to main the mainland in Lost World. So, and basically, in this film, you know, there's one guy I don't know what his name, unfortunately. Again, um, he he played he played Fisk in the in the Marvel's Daredevil series. But he works for InGen, and InGen, and InGen, they basically still have the same logo for InGen. But basically, when Indominus Rex comes, get to loose, and they, InGen, this guy, tries to take control, uh, or taking, um, you know, uh, I, I, taking advantage of the situation by I, by attempting to get Chris Pratt to let loose on the Indominus Rex with with his um, with Chris Pratt's uh, Raptors. Uh, you know, he is the alpha. So he's able to take control, but Chris Pratt doesn't want to do it. And being Injun actually kind of takes control of the situation. Chris Pratt freaks out. Um, Injun dies a lot. And the raptor, there's a lot, there's a huge raptor scene, which from which, unfortunately, the, the Indominus Rex, spoiler alert, is part raptor. So when they actually go after him, um, the Indominus Rex talks to the raptors, convinces them, convinces them to turn on they're humans, and that's what fucking, that's what, uh, like, you'll know when you see the film, it's like, oh, Chris, Chris Pratt will ask, okay, what is this animal, and they'll say, it's par, it's based T-Rex, and it's something else, and guess what, it was, it was part raptor, so, yeah, it was kind of like a, whoa, what the fuck were you thinking, <laughs> so, yeah, they, they, the raptors turn on the humans, um, eventually, actually, the raptors do kind of have a redemption by the end of this film, but it was really cool to see that. The redemption. I, I really don't want to give that away because that scene, the whole scene, um, is really awesome. But other negatives, like the, I didn't like, like I said, I didn't like entirely like the way that Ingen kind of worked in this film. But it was okay. I'm not gonna say it was terrible. Um, it, yeah, it's. I think that's kind of my only negative was you know how they left the park at the end of the film. It just didn't make sense for me personally. But. I did like pretty much everything else. Like I said, you know, it was like a three to one split. Like three, you know, there was only one thing that really bugged me, which was the ending of this film, and then some part of how InGen was implemented in this film. Everything else is pretty awesome. I liked it. Um, yeah, other than Bri Bri um, Bryce uh, Dallas Howard's how oh yeah, she's gonna run through the run through the jungle with high heels. Like what the fuck? <laughs> I, I that's one part that was kind of funny. It's like are you serious? So, yeah, and overall, the Indominus Rex, you know, 
I'm pretty much gonna jump back on the positive. There's only the one negative, but um, my well, oh, sorry guys, my my screen is just locked, so I gotta open it up again. Shit, sorry guys. Here we go. Sorry, sorry, but yeah, uh, the Indominus Rex only. Actually, one thing I'll have issue with Indominus Rex, he looks too much like the T-Rex that was used in Peter Jackson's King Kong, unfortunately. He does look a little bit like the T-Rexes that were used in that film, but it's, it's still a great Indominus Rex. He's very smart, um, but yeah, he, he kind of looked that way. He just, he just did, but yeah, good. I don't know. This film still stamped as good. I still loved it. Um, I still love the the, the John Williams uh, theme that was used in this film. Um, yeah, it was it was pretty awesome. Um, also, note one more thing. Uh, we were I know we were when the first trailers came out, and you know we obviously seen the train going through those gates, which would have been Jurassic World. You know those doors that were used, and then we were initially told that those doors were actually never there, and they were just used for the trailers. Yeah, it's used for the, it's it's in the film. So I don't know what what that was about. Um, those original Jurassic Park doors that you know that the, the jeeps drove through in the first film. So, they're there. I don't know who said that they wouldn't be in there, but, you know, someone did, and then you lied. So, that was really cool. Um, and also, the cliffhanger I'll kind of leave here is that near the end of this film, Dr. Wu is now an asset of InGen. So, InGen gets, um, gets Dr. Wu and all of his experiments and all everything that he's working on, all his information off the island. Um, and it's a, and it is kind of a cliffhanger saying that they might actually go to Isla Sorna. I think this is a byproduct of going, of possibly going to Isla Sorna at some point. Um, I think that was kind of a cliffhanger up to that or something else of sorts saying, you know, there might be more dinosaurs somewhere else. So yeah, and it was really cool to see Dr. Wu back, um, creating dinosaurs that kill people. But yeah, uh, I think that's it guys. Um, I do pretty much started this film at about three you no know, probably three point five out of five like conservatively I, I try to make an un you know unbiased uh un, how do you put it unbiased uh judgment on things even though I have a big connection to them. So I do hope that Chris Pratt returns for the next film. Um I don't da, Bryce Dallas Howard, I don't know if she will return. The kids probably won't return um to, to the next film, but I'm hoping God will see Chris Pratt back. But you know they, this film is left as a cliffhanger with how it was left so we'll hopefully we'll see another one if this movie if this film makes enough money I want to see another one so I do hope you you go see the film because it is a film that's worth watching and there are lots of great timbits from the original Jurassic Park which just blew my mind I loved it I just loved it so very much so uh, yeah guys I think that's gonna be it for my review um I thank you very much for watching and go see Jurassic World because it is a film to watch thank you